Shma, what up, Shmana Rockers? <sighs> so, I've had about a little over a week to process. On top of that, apparently there's some added extra little things that have happened in the past, within the recent recordings involving where we're at with R&B's Little Rain. I don't, which I'm not even sure what's going on with that. All we know is how his interactions have been with past managers at this point, with Dagnino, with what were you, with not only Dagnino, but also so Kaiser, uh, which doesn't seem to be much of anything at this point. Uh, even though the one with Dagnino, I'm very confused on. Uh, but. I'm not even sure <laughs> if he's actually suspended or not, but it seems like he backed out on that. I, 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 or just use it as a pet, as an insertion of power that I really didn't, that didn't go over as entirely well as what happened with Emma. Even though that's whatever with that too. Um, <laughs> I, I, but anyway. As far as the stuff that happened, the matches themselves, and what happened actually at the event that it's, is that did come from the live stream itself, the undercard, which I guess you could count it, I guess, as one, because, well, Lavic had a lot more going on for him prior to the match itself with Comic-Con, because he had to be at Hall H, so he had to run to Hall H and be there. Had his support from his girlfriend, who's apparently also recently had a... Had a not so great, but though a win, a, but a good win column for her debut in the in the IG. But we'll see how that goes. Maybe maybe things will. Uh, I'm forgetting. I'm don't know why I'm blanking on her name, and I'm sorry. Uh, if so, we've only had that one match. I'll probably remember it by the next time she actually does a match. So with Adam Lovick, yeah. Anybody really that surprised? Especially coming off of what happened with, given that, you know, Lavik has already lost, before her match with Zipper, he lost the Cushing. And the last time we seen him, before that, was an, with, was an IG having lost to Mike Kalinowski. Two former champs. Uh, couldn't hang with them. Now, not Smith can He's proven he can. He just had a bad moment with the lights. And yeah, speaking of that, I don't know how many more matches to go, but uh, until he finally gets that Dane belt, hopefully be before, if not by Spectacular. Ow. Not sure what the heck that was. Something with my fingers was acting weird. Huh. Anyway, sorry. <sighs> anyway, the, and overall, I mean, it was fine, uh, Havoc was doing okay up in the first, did okay, I guess, half and half, as far as his questions are, but when we're dealing with Schmetz, who had only one, unfortunately, didn't get that perfect round in, which was unfortunate, luckily, things within the wheel round was already more so in his favor, we, um, and definitely not in Hlavix. That definitely what did him in. And now it's definitely decided to do... Because now he's got a fire... Even with the promo that was cut, which is great. And it was nice to see him come a little more out of his shell. Shell. Even more so. Which makes sense for them to do that since Kaiser... Kaiser's still doing his mouthpiece thing, but... I'm happy to see that they're allowing... Uh... Smets to have his, uh, the Smasher to have his, bring a little more personality out of him. Because we know he does have it, if you do have, and he's shown that in interview, he's, that he can have that in interviews, and also having, given that the one promo, the one, uh, and can easily do a, uh, Macho Man impression very well, probably, probably more so than others, even in the wrestling business. Like Jay Lethal, but 
was okay. Even though that woo off in the in TNA is funny, but for a recommendation, if you look that up, you you might get a good laugh out of it. So, uh, as far as the ma that match, that second round, it's I did kind of I think what well, he didn't get the what he wanted, which wound up being mixed bag, and then I think whatever he landed on, whatever that was that I'm blanking on for some reason. Um, hmm. Was that the DC movies or DCU? I'm not entirely sure. I'm guessing it was that. I could be wrong with that, but but what? But it was something slightly better, or at least better enough that he could answer all of, and that he did fairly well in it. Pretty much had a perfect round in a second. Uh, well enough that it was like 19 to like what, it, like 19 to five at that point, and. At the, at the moment, it was almost like Lavik's situation was had a slight mirror, slight, slight mirror, or at least the result of what would, what it would be was a slight mirroring of what happened to his old partner in ha and former IG champ Hector Navarro, in the sense that started off on the Harry Potter wheel, um, chose to spin away from it, although. Instead, although what happened, just been away from it. Although Hector's was a weird botching situation, but by the time it landed on Middle Earth on his end, that didn't work out so well for him. And now, unfortunately for him, it was just more the wheel decided to go opponent's choice, and opponent's choice wound up being Middle Earth. Kind of ironic how that is, and he struggled with that, it seems, which he's had a struggle with before. So. Yeah, it just didn't go over well, but he's got a light fire under his ass. Maybe he'll actually prove that he's deservingly to be up there, but... Unfortunately, something happens at the end of the entire event, um, which, before we get to that, leads us into the main event itself. And also, yeah, he's coming. We know Smets, he's coming for that belt. He's getting his other chance. This was supposedly one by one or a contender-ish match, I guess. Though it seems that they never really confirmed it, but I think by the end of this, you kind of know why. It's because they had another plan on their minds. And that was essentially... And uh, that we'll get to in a minute. And that was... We had a first two... It's, this was the follow-up to uh, to the great match we got to throw down that I also have a post... have a little postcard-ish thing, a collectible card item thing, which I need to start making a binder with those. But anyway... As I've probably alluded to wanting to do with that since whatever. But anyway, I real it's this is a good match. Am I I will admit I'm a little underwhelmed but that's because of how great and the, for that match and the hype that came off of it. This did enough to get them close to that hype, but just more in the way of anyone who is a Weezer fan, hopefully you'll understand this analogy. I'm going to use this. Basically, the Everything Will Be on the right, All Right in the End album that came out uh, literally in 2014, literally, ironically, 20 years after their debut album, the Blue Album, a clout 90s, and if not just alternative rock, or, an, or just rock classic in general. That I think defined the whole nerd rock genre. But anyway, sorry, I had, you know me, I have to come up with some music. I mean, anyway, that album was slated to be on the level of Blue Album, and Pinkerton, their big, what is considered by many Weezer fans, fans, and many even big music lovers out there, to be like the magnum opus thing. That's what I'm having to say at the very least when it. When it comes to Mike Kalinowski, the, the last match, title match between Mike Kalinowski and Rachel Cushing, that one was Blue Album Pinkerton Levels, Lightning in the Bottle, amazing. Which is so, which that Lightning in the Bottle thing is hard to top. Somehow it took 20 years later. And despite certain things said and how certain releases lately have kind of diminished to some degree, the overall quality of that record to some people, but myself, 
though I understand with those. My point is, this match is the u -bait. Everything will be right in the end. Of, of the matches they've had. Uh, even though technically the first match, their debut was good, but not, I wouldn't say, near the level of that, which would basically make me sound like I would pick Pinkerton over Blue, which is not the case. But there are people who do will probably understand and agree with me when I say that when it comes to Kalinowski 2 and trying to compare that to 3. Hell, by that point, you, by, if in, by that logic, you'd probably have to go Green Album, blah, 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 blah. Sorry for the Weezer. Sorry for anyone who isn't a Weezer fan to not reference this. By this point, I may have to also mention to Danny Cost, speaking of that, I may have to talk, uh, mention, and shout out him a little later. Again, uh, fellow d with that fellow dungeon head and action army brat. Um, so, the match itself, I mean, Kalen Oski was, I don't know if it was his best showing, and, may, and not exactly Cushy's best showing either. In fact, well, nobody got perfect rounds. She managed to get at least maybe nine out of her mat, nine out of the questions, and while unfortunately seven for Kalinowski. And it seemed like things weren't going over as well, even by the second round of questions and everything. Sounds questions. Uh, Though I can't remember off the top of my head, unfortunately, when it came to what wheel slice, what the wheel slices were at that point. Not sure I can even say that with the round three. Um, although, it might have been DC or DCEU, actually, when I think about it. So it would make sense that it wound up working out for Kalinowski, and he chose to go with what most people in the corruption page had said, said when it came to betting, just betting all in or the highest you can get winning three points. He did so, and apparently so did Cushane. And the tables immediately turned. Had it, or at least two points. I'm not entirely sure, but the tables had turned in terms of the score. What was 15 to, like, I think... 18? Or something? Of that nature? And it wound up turning reverse from that betting round where Kalinowski was completely in the in the lead and and did really well in his betting in that in the speed round and Cushing had a bad a bad one E moment that took off a point. Oh she was able to at least get the final answer sir so and make sure she definitely and which was an easy one. This is the one, luckily, that, of course, even Kalinowski probably would have got it anyway, because of being DC anyway. And it just made her just maintain her 15 points going out of it, while Kalinowski went up about two or so points, basically forcing, basically, she's six points behind, which essentially forces her to basically answer all of her questions regardless. Having to answer all of her questions, or at least managing to get her two, at least her two and her five. To be able to, but she managed to get all of her, all those her questions right, which was enough to basically force him to at least get to at least force Kalinowski to at least answer his two and his three and the mo and his three pointer, possibly five if you missed the three. But given that it wound up being DC movies as the category on the second question, in, in the fifth and ch final championship round. It, don't think anybody was really all that surprised that of all the questions it had to be that no one was surprised that he was going to get it by that point um, and he did and uh, it was about as emotional as how he had been when uh, he won his number one contendership against Smets I'm still a little better about it myself but the only time I wasn't was because I'm kind of getting sick and tired of Smets doing the shirt thing Let's see, I have a shirt. Anyway, so it's which is weird because now he's past couple times in the posted in the corruption page for my Smartdown Rocks. I've gotten a couple likes from like oh, this is starting to get a weird topsy turvy world for me. I don't, I don't know. Oh, anyway, and I barely posted much of anything there outside from Smartdown Rocks. Figure that. Um. 
But, uh, yeah, you did good. I have my ups and downs with you, Cal. Well, ups and downs with you, Mike, but... Or at least of which amongst corruption for the most part. Yeah. It's, you're the one I wind up having my ups and downs with. When I really shouldn't be, but... Or at least the way storylines or certain things happen, it's just, just how it is. There's no questioning at this point, ooh, especially with the past couple matches you've done, with whether it had been your match against Janine and you and, and the corruption versus Downey Fathers. No one was really... All, more so the Janine match at that point made it pretty clear you're on a tear. I already kind of figured you were from... Because after... Anyone who still bothered to question after having... After... After... Count... After the... Throwdown match... What... What's, what the fuck's wrong with you? I'm just saying. No, no, I still... I preferred Smets because I was going and willing to go for Moy because I made a damn page, you know. I had to. To. Out of... Out of obligation and... My own obligation, I guess. Uh, though I was torn up until some kid had to mouth off and... Yeah, in case you're wondering who that who that guy was, it was me. I did the shirt bet. James Smith's let me down on that and kind of made me... You know, all I lost was dignity and pride. I didn't really bet anything else, technically. So, so I just basically just stopped wearing the shirt until he went... Until Smith gets that belt, which he will get that belt. Keep it warm, Mike. And I know... You'll put up a fight, and he's repping. He's he's ready. And if the, and if beating it takes beating Mara and then beating Cushing to prove it to you, so be it. So be it. Heck, if he has to, heck, if Eminem has to come back and he has to beat him, he will do it. He will do it. Even Eminem, but even though at that point Eminem himself is already knows he's probably gonna get knocked. At, not at this point, we'll get knocked the fuck out. I don't know. Speaking of that, yes, Smara is back. Though he called out after the match, they both had mutual respect, and damn, you and the Shannon. Well, at some point I said Sharon, and I got really kind of called out in the spoiler page for Schmodown. But anyway, yee, my bad. My bad, Shannon. My bad. <sighs> But yeah, that was that was cool. That was a cool moment. You know, just yeah, I know it's it's kind of as far as I know, Mike's the best tweener character right now, and that's the best way we'll, we should describe him. In that, as guys like Randy Orton would be, and I guess Triple H kind of can be, and here and there, if we're going by wrestlers. But anyway. Uh, some, anyway, the, uh, overall that was a good match, great main event, but uh, just the overall San Diego event was great, uh, it was fun to watch. I was more worried about how, how Smets would fare, but I kind of figured, I had a feeling he would, yeah, there was no way he wasn't, especially after having seen the promo prior to having seen it, seen it during the match. And just Mara coming out and basically getting her rematch calls in. She apparently was dealing with some men, some issues from her car accident. Was still getting the best of her. And and just her involvement in the Schmodown and where she was at. And she just needed to have the break. She couldn't have the rematch. And the way things left off from that from the post interview of that just didn't. Some just felt wrong about it, man. And it really made Mike look damn good. I'll tell you that when it came to after that match for some reason. And, and uh, I mean, it was definitely something here. Um, oh, and overall, uh, yeah. As usual, Smowdown rocks itself. And, uh, good luck. Uh, there's a possibility you'll get all three belts. But if Smets faces you with for that IG title before you do... That's not gonna happen. Then it's not gonna happen because Smets is gonna get that belt one way or the other. By the end of this year, he will get that belt. He will get that belt. No one should question that. 
there's no way he can't at this point. Unless somehow Inman also comes into play again. Then it then he's got to go through more people. And with how many months we have left in the year, I mean, and what other many matches we're going to have, including those tournaments. Yeah, so I could understand them having to for, to have no choice but to make make it make it a three-way match up number one contendership if Smets has to go through Mara and Rachel at the same time so be it just to get it but which is going to be tough as it is and both with but I believe Smets will be more the more likely because because Rachel and Mara have faced each other already they know what to expect of each other, with especially when they weren't one hundred percent during their last match, and that was match of the year. So I'm, so yeah, this is so maybe if we're and so more than likely if we're lucky, we could get a match of the year out of that. And I'd like to see Schmetz in one of those matches of the fucking year. That's for damn sure. <sighs> or at least, well, and even though technically the number one contendership match could be a contender for some. Uh, and I think it would have more than likely had a chance if not for the stumble and we, we could have went to, uh, honest to God, went to sudden death. <sighs> sudden death after that and it would have been up there with it, with it. And it would have tied with it. Or at least that's what I was hoping for, damn it. <sighs> but then that's, that don't tell Peter had to happen. I was like, God damn it. The only time I use it and out of if he's gonna do the shirt thing on me. Don't ever do that again, Smets. Okay? <laughs> I have I have an I don't wanna use it, but I will. <sighs> Respect the fact that I'm doing what I believe I have to do, even if it doesn't make sense to anyone else. I know it makes enough sense that I'm willing to do what I gotta do as Dungeon Master to make sure you get that damn belt. Even though Kaiser's doing a hell of a lot more probably than me, but still. And he's sure as shit is, or else Oyama wouldn't have the fucking belt. Then again, that's kind of more Oyama, but at the same time, it's kind of 50-50 with that. So, Kaiser deserves some credit anyway, regardless. So, uh, I mean, the promos were alright. I mean, Kaiser's was kind of funny, though. I don't know how about him. And Martin B will eventually learn to respect him. If it means loose cannons have to beat the family to do so. It's going to be an interesting match when that happens. And more likely in the team tournament. I'll tell you that much. So, what did you... So, um... And, uh, yeah. I mean, Mara's going to face Smets. And it, it's going to break my heart a little bit. Because uh, I have a proud founding member badge. And it broke my heart when Mara was leaving. So, yeah. But anyway. Yeah, this is what's going to happen. So... It's, I'm glad she's back, and it's nice to see that the Mara, the Mara, the fan pay the, for Mara's starting to get active again, officially after Friday. So definitely going to put that shortcut pin back in it. So anyway, so yeah, won't break my heart. But if it winds up being a one-on-one -on -one thing between the two of them, him and Smets, yes, so be it. So be it, and as well as having to face Rachel, which I kind of figured she was—he was gonna have to go through Rachel regardless because of the because of the victory on Mike's end. So, but then again, I mean, she has a chance for a number one contendership. I mean, even though it's, I guess, even if not for a rematch clause, I don't. Even though RMB's ridiculous four match win makes it uh, literally next to impossible to get a rematch, to see a rematch. Again, but I understand because they want to get more people to get that belt, that those belts. But given the how many, given what we're gonna have for top five right now, because I know Mara's probably back up there now that she's back in the league. So, uh, but she'll probably need a win for this year just to get just to be even up there at this point. So, what did you guys think of the match of the entire San Diego live event, which probably was to me personally probably the best thing of that entire thing in San Diego in general even though there's certain things that did happen that came out of Comic Con that were kind of nice-ish but anyway leave a comment below let me know rock that like button thrust if you must if you like this video link in description to my Facebook page so I can follow me there 
And uh, as always, guys, keep it random, keep it real, keep it rocking. And yes, that's thunder. And no, I will not be quoting Imagine Dragons. Don't make me do that. <sighs> if you're smell... As always, guys, keep it random, keep it real, keep it rocking. If you're smell... What the movie trivia Smowdown and Smowdown rocks.